Hello guys, it is Monday. The hospital is so boring. Like, <laughs> I don't really know what to vlog when I'm here. Literally the most exciting thing that's happened all day is that my ice pack just leaked all over the bed. And so we're changing <laughs> the sheets. That's literally the most exciting thing that's happened. I suppose that's a good thing after all of the excitement of last week, but honestly this is like another kind of torture that wears away at you is just the waiting we're waiting for blood cultures we're waiting for the infection to go away <laughs> i'm waiting until they will let me stinking take an actual shower it's just waiting and waiting and waiting and i have not been feeling well to be honest i'd say each day is a little bit harder headache wise and just not having a shunt vision is really bad and it's making it really difficult for me to do any of my projects like i said it's monday and i have not even started editing the vlog that is supposed to go up today and i'm like embarrassed to admit that which is stupid because <laughs> i can't edit right now is I can't see. There is a lot of pressure on my brain and I physically cannot see. I don't know if my eyes look weird. They feel weird. Plus I keep just like drifting off. I, I just can't focus. I don't know how to explain it but basically what I'm seeing, everything is double and everything is blurry but also moving while also tilted and then it seems like there's almost like just a film over my eyes like a filter and then on my right side um it's kind of tunnel vision so i can kind of see only like half out of my right side it's blacking in from the outside and on top of that i see floaters which are like just a lot of moving little things in your vision i see like pin pricks like little stars moving around so it's not even just like i could put on a pair of glasses and that would solve my problem it's like i can't see <laughs> but i am determined to try to edit so we'll see how that goes we also have a friend who is actually leaving today so we're gonna try to have a little bit of a party down in the common room really hoping to make it down to that because i'm excited for her and i don't know when i'll see her again and that is why i'm sitting on this chair attempting to brush my hair out let's see if we can tame my hair into something that is relatively acceptable that's gonna have to be good enough i'm pretty sure at this point that my hair is like 99 percent dry shampoo what's this contraption coming down the hall <laughs> this reminds me of something in Dr. Seuss. <laughs> the fandangles and whiz. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow. Look, mom, no hands. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see you come down the hall. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's not that funny. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see what the nurses think. <laughs> Hello you guys. It's Tuesday. Same outfit, different day. As it is with hospital life. Last time I was here. I totally overpacked. I brought a bunch of clothes. I didn't end up wearing any of them. So this time when we came, my mom was like, pack like one outfit. So I'm definitely gonna have to work on finding that happy medium for next time. But anyway, once again, it's pretty quiet around here. Not much going on. Last night was really fun. We had a little party in the common lounge area for one of our dear, dear friends. Um, her sister is a patient here and that their whole family has become our family. <laughs> and she just graduated and she's gonna be 
moving off and doing some things on her own and we'll miss her so much but it's so great to watch her move on and the last few years of her life have just been hospital life so i'm so happy to see her spreading her wings and getting to do some you know regular 19 year old stuff we made it nice we had a little cheesecake and some chips and some sodas and it was a nice night it meant a lot and it was definitely one of those highlights that just helps you get through these difficult days but now i am just sitting down to edit last week's vlog which is obviously late i am sorry i just haven't been able to see the last few days and i woke up this morning and my vision is functional i'm guessing that i'm only gonna have a few hours so i really have to get this done before it goes back out but there is something i want to talk about it's something that i don't feel right with ignoring i don't feel right putting out a video that doesn't address this so here goes we're gonna get a little bit serious for a second as many of you guys may know a couple days ago we lost a very important member of the chronic illness community her name was claire wineland you have probably seen her videos on youtube before claire was a cystic fibrosis patient i don't even really feel comfortable saying it like that because she was so many things and i really don't feel like the word patient as a single descriptive word is enough to encompass what she was claire was she was an activist in every sense of the word i mean she gave more than she had and every day that she lived, she lived it like it was her last. She did what she loved, and she loved her job as a public speaker, and she was fantastic at it. And if you have never seen Claire speak, I will link some talks of hers down below, because this girl was a force to be reckoned with. She touched so, so, so many lives, including mine. I can't tell you how many of her Instagram live streams I have been a part of. I mean, this girl is, I mean, this girl was just amazing. She started her own foundation, I believe when she was 16. I will definitely also link that down below if you guys are interested in making a donation of any kind. But yes, unfortunately, Claire is no longer with us. She underwent a lung transplant. She suffered a blood clot, which led to a stroke. They tried twice with surgery to relieve the swelling, but unfortunately it was too late by then. And they removed her from life support and took her final painless breath with her family all around her through her new lungs. But the thing about Claire is that she didn't have a filter. She was upfront and blunt and she was open and vulnerable and lived her life in a way that I think a lot of us could learn from. Something that she spoke a lot about was death. And death is a very uncomfortable topic, especially when we're talking in the scopes of chronic illness. It's something that we haven't really touched on on this channel, but I have to say because Claire was so open and blunt and she was not afraid to talk about death, her passing ended up being a very different kind of experience than it maybe would be with most other 21 year olds. It's really hard to think about that kind of stuff and it's especially hard to bring up with loved ones because obviously that's something that evokes a lot of emotion and fear but it is a part of advocacy that I think needs to be talked about more. I do think that it is our job to continue that legacy and to continue that conversation. Claire knew what she wanted. She knew what she wanted in life and she knew what she wanted in death. And she made those both very clear. And because of that, her family and friends and even those of us who followed her story knew exactly what to do to honor her wishes in those difficult moments and because of that i feel like there was just a lot of peace surrounding her passing another person actually here on youtube and on the social media who has been candid and open about this kind of thing is lauren rowe lauren also has cystic fibrosis and has had a double lung transplant and is another great advocate that i hope you will check out but i remember she contacted me like a year ago maybe she tagged me in a video i believe it was called like 
the funeral tag or something like that I'll have to look it up I'll link everything I'm talking about and so she contacted me and asked if I wanted to do a video and I said no because as hilarious and upbeat as Lauren's video was I was afraid that if I put myself out there like that, that I was going to be scaring and hurting those who really care about me. So I said that I really wasn't comfortable making that kind of video and never really revisited it. To be honest, I probably still will not be making that video, but what I will be doing is I will be having more of an open conversation with my parents and with my family and with my loved ones about what my wishes are should I ever end up on life support or any of those what if situations that we don't want to talk about but eventually need to come to terms with. As negative and difficult as it seems to talk about, I think that through Claire we can see firsthand that having that continuous conversation can actually take some of that fear and some of that pain out of the equation. And I know that that just got really dark and a lot of you guys are probably still left ringing and broken from having lost this amazing presence in our community. So I think I'm just going to end that part of the conversation for now. But I'll just remind you guys that you as a chronic illness patient, as a person, have rights. And a lot of times we don't even know the rights that we have. So that makes it difficult to be a good advocate for ourselves. How are you supposed to make decisions when you don't know you have a decision to make? So even just setting end of life planning aside, there are a lot of life planning decisions that we can be making. Making those plans and making those decisions ahead of time before you need them is the best thing that you can do. I know that for me and a lot of you being medically fragile and having a lot of chronic illness, it's very vulnerable and, and sometimes we end up in positions where we are unable to truly advocate for ourselves. So having a plan in place already that either is like accessible with a bracelet or a wallet card or even in the emergency part of your phone, you can feel safe in knowing that whatever happens your voice is still being heard. I'm also going to recommend the app Backpack Health because you guys know that's what I use. I worked with them and did a little promo and I've talked about it in the past. I haven't talked about it in a while, but it is an app that has been really helpful for me. It can even translate languages. If maybe your first language isn't English or if you're somewhere and something happens and their first language isn't English, it's a really great tool to bridge that language barrier. I mean, you just keep all of your medical records on there. You can have emergency cards. It's really a pretty awesome app. I really recommend checking it out. And I know that they are actually partnering up with a medical alert band company. Again, all of the information will be below when my brain is actually functioning. I know I will be getting one. I've seen a prototype. You can basically write all of the regular stuff that you would normally write on a medical alert bracelet. But then at the bottom, it had like a special URL code, which will give them immediate access to all of the information in your emergency card that you have personally curated. As far as I know, you actually get complete control as to what pops up. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot even fit all of my diagnoses on one bracelet. I wear about three, and that doesn't even get into the medications. So. Just putting that out there as a really great option. Like I said, I'll be trying out the bracelet, but yeah, I might have gone off on a tangent there. Hopefully when I go back and I edit this, I can try to make some sense out of it. This thing will just not stop beeping. Hello you guys, it's Wednesday, and honestly my symptoms are kind of continuing to go downhill, so I've started taking a little bit of Tylenol to help manage my headache, Hopefully that's all I will need and I won't need to ask for anything stronger. We are halfway through these IV antibiotics, hopefully, and I don't want to fall in the pattern of treating the pain too much, but I'm not going to allow myself to be completely miserable for a week either. So I'm taking Tylenol, trying to distract myself with my various projects. I'm hating knitting a little bit less now. I've got like a bit of a scarf going. I think I still hate it just a little bit. It is the slowest thing ever. I feel like I could have crocheted 20 million scarves by now, but I have to admit, it looks pretty cool. It's really warm. The stitches are really nice. 
but it's so time consuming. I don't know how people can like knit blankets. It's a gift that I was not given. It's starting to kind of drive me crazy. So I'm switching back over to embroidery. I'm gonna make like a little pouch for my friend that just says courage, dear heart, because that's one of the quotes that she really likes. I'm trying to decide which color to use for the word courage. It's gonna be pretty big. So I think I wanna go for like a blue and then I'll do flowers around it. I was gonna do purple, but I don't know. I really like the idea of the blue with like pink and turquoise little rosettes. I guess we'll have to see. I am going to try out a new stitch, so it should be interesting. And just like that, another hospital day comes to a close. One more day that we can take off before I can have my shunt put back in. Not an easy day by any sense of the word, but I'm glad at least that I've managed to be a little bit more productive instead of just sleeping. I've got like half a scarf and like half a bag to show for it. This bag's actually really kind of coming out cute. I ended up choosing to use pink at like the very last second and I'm really liking it. Also, it's kind of cool to be working on a project where my supplies can kind of be self-contained a little bit. Voila, the perfect traveling project. Hello you guys, it is Thursday. I'm feeling a little bit better today than I was yesterday. I was feeling pretty rough earlier, but then we kind of had this storm and now it's passing. And as it's passing, I'm noticing I'm starting to feel a little bit better. It could also be though that the meds just sort of wind up with that. But my doctor is back in the building. He was away for like the last week. So we were a little unsure what the plan was. The good news is that he's thinking that we could do the lumbar puncture more like on the 10th when I have two days left of antibiotics still because we're pretty sure that the infection is going to be gone by then and it does take a few days to kind of culture those things and so he wants us to have to wait as little time as possible which we are on board with. I would potentially be cutting two days of just sitting here and then maybe even a weekend yeah so we really just want to get home everyone here is really great but we want to get home so to lauren yeah to everybody so yeah that's what's going on i'm still doing my iv antibiotics three times a day i'm tolerating it better than i was but i'm still getting really 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 hot when we run it like my hands and feet get really really hot they feel like they're burning and pulsing and i just get really flushed and I don't know. It's not the worst symptom, but it's not super fun. Also, it smells and tastes really bad. Like, it smells and tastes like fish food to me. And the weird part is nobody else can smell or taste it because it's going into me. So it's not like an external smell, it's like an internal smell. I don't know if you guys are IV tasters, but I'm an IV taster. I can taste anything that goes in even saline it's kind of nasty and i was just wondering what that smell was for days and i didn't realize what it was until one day the nurse hooked up the iv kind of weird and it popped off and started spilling on like my shirt and our hands and she's like what is that smell I'm like thank god we know what the smell is but besides that it's working pretty well and I can be pretty thankful for that because I know IV antibiotics aren't always easily tolerated and usually have some pretty nasty side effects so if this is the worst then I guess I'm pretty lucky but I do have some packages here from you guys and a letter which is so sweet and I'm really excited to open and I was asked to open as much as I could on camera so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give the camera over to Trusty our, assistant. our faithful friend, my mother, and she is going <laughs> to capture me opening these things. <laughs> I hope that's entertaining for you. It's entertaining for me. Not a lot happens around here. Look at how cute, like, Everybody is so thoughtful. <laughs> I don't know where you guys find Lots these of things. elephants and sunflowers but lately. <laughs> I Sweet. love it. Oh, it's hand drawn. Or colored. Yeah. It's an elephant. 
Ooh, thank you, Mummy. She likes to craft me and Bonnie. <laughs> she wants to craft? With yeah. Yes. We need a craft conference. Yeah, well, I mean, we should do like a live stream sometime where we all just craft. Okay. I guess now I'm gonna open this envelope, which may or may not be medical documents. <laughs> We're not quite sure. I don't know why they would is. come here. So. This is extremely urgent on the corner. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, it's a Must lot. be chocolate for me. It's written in sparkly green gel pen, which makes me a little bit more excited than I probably should. <laughs> She's always loved sparkles, this one. And I'm green. telling you, from the get-go, I can't even tell you how much. Oh, there's stickers in here. Oh my gosh, did you draw this? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And there's a Lush gift card in here. <gasps> Which you would better believe I, I see am a going zebra. To be using. But this is hand drawn. In gel That pen. is so Isn't that amazing? Perfect and good, yes. Oh my oh. gosh. Everybody is just amazing. That? And they say the, it's poorly drawn. <laughs> no. It's very, very it's good. Mark and Denise. It's all sparkly gel pen. I love that. Oh, let me see what fell in here. So cool! These are like stickers. <gasps> These are, are they so hedgehogs? cool. Are they? No, did I drop another one? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, this one is really, really cute. It's a cat. But look, medical. Oh, the Phantom. Musical, mom. Oh my goodness. Who are those two guys? <laughs> uh. Um. This is uh, uh, Angelra and maybe Grantaire. This is Alexander Hamilton. Oh my gosh, yes. And Galinda and Oh Alphaba. yes, Alphaba. These you thought no. that was Les Mis? Yeah, that is Les Mis. Huh. It's um fan fiction. Where do I put the stickers? Can we all put them on my journal? Switch gears. Okay. It feels suspiciously yarn like. <laughs> you probably ordered that or, one. No, I don't think they did. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe when you're oh, it's cognitive. So oh my gosh. See, there can never be too many fuzzy socks in the hospital, I am telling you. Oh, those are nice. Those are you. These are definitely going to be more. Oh, do I see like a it character? It looks like an owl or something. What's a bear? Ah. Oh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> this, oh my gosh. Oh, a fox. Okay. Wait, these are long. Okay. Okay, well these... Oh, they, they go with your slippers. Little deer. Oh my gosh. I think but I they're just so... I have to put these on. Soft. I love anything sort of heathery like that. Right. So nice. I'm going to put a pair on. Too bad I don't have that sock thingy. Oh, the little ears stick out. Yes. I seriously can't. I know. Those are <laughs> sweet. Up here, original ultra rich cream. It's, it's called good. skin food. It seems incredibly generous. No animal testing through parabens and papal. <laughs> <laughs> Free from synthetic preservatives and fragrances. Looks like the nice this, thick I mean, kind. If this works, yeah. like, we really need this. Yeah. <laughs> because we've been. Now that I'm 29, Ooh, you know what? it smells really good. My skin is getting kind of dry. Smell this. I I'm need definitely going to be able to tolerate it. And I love the smell. Oh, you want? <laughs> Give me a little. She doesn't just want to smell it. No. To... <laughs> oh, I love that consistency. Whoops, the camera's going yeah, everywhere. I'm like, Mom. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> You're filming. Does it say who it's from? Um, oh, okay. Julia. Oh. Thank you, Julia. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tolerate this under the curtain. So if not, I hope your mom will enjoy it. It's the best I made from super dried out hospital air skin. Wish you the best of luck and to send as much of my support as possible. Okay. That was that very, very thoughtful. So, I mean, it is very the true. It's of motion are the two things in the hospital that yep. and like, lip, yep, are lip, must. Lip, lip care, stuff. body care, and skin socks. care. And this is from... Nikki, she said, I, I've been watching your videos for a while and I think you're such a lovely soul. Oh, just a little something mm. to show I'm thinking of you, Nikki. 
Oh my goodness. Do you know what this is? Oh, yarn cutter. Well, you can wear it on a necklace, and then it's also got that use. Well, I was thinking I could just, just attach it to my bag. Yeah. But it is so pretty. I could wear it. That, That's so thoughtful because... You have no idea because I have these... Necklaces. I vote for necklace because uh, otherwise things get lost in the bed. <laughs> I know that firsthand. These Many a time where I just got comfy on my recliner <laughs> and I hear, Mom... Can you help me find my scissors? <laughs> and they are always just right here. And they're pretty big too, but <laughs> they still get lost. <laughs> they're always right here. If it's not in my line of sight and it's not in my hand, it's gone. Did seal. not know these existed. Did not know how much I needed these, but now I do. And I'm so glad I have one. It's Thank perfect. You. My mom has been making fun of me because I'm a little old lady sitting here with my crocheting, then my knitting, and like now I'm doing some embroidery. What can I say? I am an old I'm not soul. making fun of you. No, I'm very proud of you. She doesn't make fun of me. She just teased me. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Anyway. Thank you guys so, so much. And I know there are some of you who have said that you said things as well. And that is just, I mean, you can tell I'm just speechless. Um, I am too. It's the just. The outpouring of love. And honestly, like the cards and the gifts and the comments, they all mean the same to me. Like, don't feel like you have to send something. Don't, knowing, don't spend, you don't have to spend it's money. Just knowing please. that people are out there and that we have this community and that you know it's not just me talking to the camera that it's a friendship that we've built it's just been really special i have no words so thank you i was actually able to peel the elephant washi tape off of the envelope and stick it on my journal oh, which is it. so cute and i think i want to put alex on the back because he's got his like little quill also, this journal is kind of perfect. My mom found it in the gift shop. Oh my goodness. That's so perfect. I'll put the others on the bulletin board so I can look at them until I find a place to put them. We don't have anything to stick to. <laughs> I think that we can use some embroidery needles, but until then, the bulletin board is <laughs> a little bit uh, unconventional here. All right. Hi hey guys, it's Friday and I have another little <laughs> bundle of packages and I did promise you guys I'd open them on camera so I'm gonna do this and I want you guys to know that I'm not like trying to brag or anything. I'm just really, really, really genuinely thankful for all of these things and you guys wanna see what you sent on the vlogs and so I can at least owe you that. On this one, this one's from my aunt and my two cousins who you just met, Kathy, Emily, and Amy. They were here for um, Aladdin. But look at how cute this is. They're it's from so California. Awesome. They made me this little watercolor card, which is so cute. That has to go on the board. And they made me a birthday card. They painted a peach, and it says, A peach like you deserves <laughs> a wonderful birthday. It's so cute. So, thank you so much, Auntie Kathy and Emily and Amy. This one says from Maddie Pfeiffer, which I feel like I recognized your name. I'm not sure if you've made an Etsy order before. Where is she from? Pennsylvania. Oh. So. Come on, visit. Oh my gosh, this card is so cute. Oh, sea turtle. Oh, we love sea gosh. turtles. And even the inside of the envelope is adorable. Yes. Oh, look at the look sequins. At the, but it looks like almost like mother of pearl. That is the most beautiful card. Thank you, Maddie. I am the luckiest sock person ever this week. So this is I am Wonder Woman. Oh. And it's like. It's written in the grippy material. Oh, these are really thick. Yeah, they look, uh, those will be wonderful in the winter too. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're so, Maddie, these are awesome. Having the right socks is. You guys have no idea what a sock freak I I just, I love. Mm-hmm. It makes you happy. That is so funny. So it's like you can see that when I have my feet up, you know, it's like <laughs> on the bottom. 
Oh, that's, that is so cute. cute. I can't that's wait to see those. Socks, right? Those will make the vlog on your feet. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. I'm never good at this perforations. Oh, that was not so bad. Oh. Ooh, this is so pretty. It's a little bracelet, and that's so cool. It's got like a little zebra wearing it. Strong is beautiful. Um, yes. But the thing that's so cool about this is like the braided. It looks like yeah. it's braided. Yeah. So that Put is so... Put it on. So, oh yeah. It fits so perfectly. So thank you, thank you, thank you to whoever sent this. You guys definitely don't forget to sign your name in the notes if you want me to know who it's from. But anonymous gifts are always sweet too. So thank you. Elka and Christina, I thought you both might enjoy this book. He is with you every step of the way. Keep fighting Zebra Sister. I hope this speaks for itself. The boys also now want one. Oh, oh, oh. The okay. I know who it is. really make you smile. They also thought Dr. Lou would get a kick out of it, too. Did you figure it out, the boys? Must be summer. <laughs> so this. And Dakota and Cherokee helped. I think it might be for you. What? Tea. Oh, tea. Assam Earl Grey Organic Peppermint English Breakfast Lemon Orange oh Organic Chamomile Decaf Breakfast and Green Tea with Jasmine. Oh, that, they all sound good. I like the I sound of the green tea her. with Jasmine. This is so perfect because I've been telling her that she Taylor's. needs to get into teas because she keeps drinking coffee because she loves a warm drink and she wants the caffeine and the energy but it makes her sick every single time it's kind of acidic and so i keep <laughs> saying you need to try different teas oh so my goodness no excuse and the book is called god is with you every day it's a 365 day devotional oh max lucado so this is really nice. That was very, Thank very... You, work. We can uh, read it together here. <laughs> it's a happy pill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, did the boys oh, pick that out? Did it turn off? Okay. <laughs> it says, side effects. Excessive happiness, contagious laughter accompanied with a sore stomach and tears. Oh, oh my! One well, of us will squeeze that whenever, people. whenever uh, one of us is getting kind of low. That is so funny. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! The boys. Thank you. I can guys. just picture them picking that out. Thank you, <laughs> three of you. Oh, that is so oh funny. My. Okay, this one's from Jane. So I've been waiting for this one because I talked to Jane the other night, and she's been following my videos this week. I think she's like week twelve. And so we had like a little phone call the other night and she told me something was coming, so I was like, mm. never it is. I love the color already. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's like, wait, there's stuff in it. Oh my gosh. This is so perfect, you have no idea. What did I just say? Oh, measuring tape? No way. It's full of like, different size crochet hooks. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's going to be Which fun. Is perfect because I'm trying to take up that drop stitch in my knitting. <laughs> but still, a like... A measuring tape, a green one, which I literally asked if we could find a measuring tape. Some little... Oh my gosh. It's oh, those are needles? exactly what I needed. All I think stuff. the different size crochet needles oh, and this would is be for, fun oh, this to is for cutting see what it looks off. like, you know, to have the smaller this needles. So cool, and like you have, and these are little stitch markers. That's just so this thoughtful. Is exactly what I need. I am so is happy. she a knitter or crocheter? Did she say? I don't know, but this is a lot of crochet stuff, so maybe crocheting. But like, there's tiny little hooks, which is so perfect because I'm like trying to use a needle to pick up the. Thank you so much. This is so cute, and I'm gonna use this like literally every single day. That is really, really perfect and, and so, so thoughtful. Neat. Yeah, thank you. it is. Thank I love you, the bag. Thank you, thank you, Jane. It was so even great. on its own. We love the bag. <laughs> I know, and it was so great getting to talk to you on the phone this week. I mean, it's just like, oh my gosh. What is it? <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! No, this another 
is... There's some really amazing people out there. Well, now I have all of the tools I need... Who know you and be. have good ideas. This is so cool. It said boho embroidery if oh it went my gosh. by too like, quickly. It's just like all of these different like ideas and patterns. I mean, that is so that cool. That is going to help keep you busy. It, it, What you got? Crystals. Oh my goodness. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. That is just so how pretty this one is. beautiful. And this whole idea is so perfect. Those are big. Nice and I big. Know. Now this is a mystery one package. Chakra. It doesn't say who it's from. Yeah, this is another one that wasn't signed. It just with an anonymous kit. Also, there's some of these like little like cable clips, which is oh. kind of awesome. Oh yeah. I could probably stick like one on the side of the feeding pump, and I could use that to hold the piece that keeps falling. But we got a lot, a lot of tubing, a lot of wires. The cord here. jumble. And it comes with a little like booklet of like all the chakras. I never even heard of this. Where before. to put? Chakra. I, I was trying to explain this to you. Remember? Yeah, I do Maybe actually. You need to read the booklet. It's um, <laughs> wisdom, power. Sexuality, creativity, Which basic one's trust. Sexuality? Orange, of course. My, my favorite one. color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Really Let me hold it in the sun. This is the throat chakra. That's perfect. Hey guys, another hospital night is coming to a close. I feel like the time is going by a lot faster than I thought it was going to, so that's really nice. I could potentially be having my lumbar puncture in like three days. I want to get to the next step and I'm so tired of not having a shunt. I'm raring to go here, but I was told that maybe I can have a shower tomorrow since Tomorrow is Saturday, and Saturday is my port access day, so they could de-access me. I could take a shower, and then they would re-access me for my next dose of antibiotics. So I'm literally so excited about that because I have not had a real shower like since I got here. But guys, look, I have stuck with my knitting because I am stubborn, and if I start a project, I am going to finish that project. So I don't know how to hold this up for you guys, but it is getting longer. It's going to be an infinity scarf right now. It's just a finite scarf and it is taking forever. It's funny, like every time one of the nurses or techs comes in, they're like, oh, have you made any progress? I want to see your scarf. So you better believe that I am leaving this hospital with a scarf. Ugh. Good night, you guys. First shower since the last surgery. Oh yeah, port the access for two hours. <laughs> Hello guys, it is Saturday night and I am off to sleep so I figured it was about time to close out this vlog. I know that this was a bit of a boring week but I can't really help it. It was a boring week for me too. I feel like there's so much going on but there's also nothing going on. But today I did get my shower. It was the first shower I'd had in like weeks because we finally de-accessed my port for a little while. It felt so good to get clean after all of that time. Let me access my port again. So I'm back on my fluids, back on the antibiotics. Being disconnected was pretty good while it lasted. Oh, and I finished my infinity scarf. Yay! My very first knitting project has been completed. It may be my last knitting project as well. Also, if you're a knitter, um, can you please tell me why it's like rolling up on itself and how I can fix it? Am I doing something wrong when I'm turning around or is that just the nature of knitting? I do have to admit, it's really soft, it's really thick, it's really warm. There aren't the same holes that I end up with when I crochet. So yes, I do like the finished product, but I don't know if it was worth the effort.
And yeah, I guess that's it. If you liked this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these videos, you can hit that subscribe button and the bell icon will tell you every time I upload a video, which is kind of cool. See you guys next week. Goodbye.